Prepare yourself for a sprawling discussion on just about anything, where critical thinking meets pop culture in a collision of mind-bending proportions. Please secure all neurons and prepare for full frontal cortex. It's time for Incoherent Ramblings. Ah! Oh, Fred! Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Incoherent Ramblings, episode 41. I didn't say it in zero before. <laughs> uh, it buzzed a bit. I'm your host, Joey Shamble, and we also have... Oh, honey, Jer. Gail Anderson. And Daryl George. And today's episode is Daryl's Choice of FUD, which stands for Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. No, what is it, Daryl? It's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And death. <laughs> no, not... No, no, no. And, and doubt. Don't dick. dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dick. 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 Oh, Our sponsor today is <laughs> Freddy Krueger. Not because we're doing dreams, but because, man, he's scary and he works on those th- fears. To- That's right. Dude, he's a scary mofo. Yeah, Speaking of Pedophile Thursdays. Okay, there's no such thing <laughs> as Pedophile Thursdays. You made it up. And it, don't make it a thing. Wait, wait, no, we're no. live in the episode right now. Paul. Oh, yeah, sorry. Not supposed, to, not supposed to talk about that stuff. Well, I didn't say what date it was. <sighs> it's just the day of the bear. week. So, anyway, uh, oh, yeah. remember you can uh, always reach us. Show at uh, IamRambling.com, and please comment on any of our pages, Facebook, whatever. We we are now uh, offering daily or semi-daily beeps to remind us uh, to put things and dings. <laughs> yeah. That's not the right thing. Dude. That was so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's supposed to make everyone deaf when it goes to, off. Uh, to uh, keep you guys interested, so keep an eye on Facebook because there's lots of cool stuff going on there. Okay, yeah, so... Yeah, uh, we're, we're updating and marketing, baby. Yeah, oh, that's wait. right. Oh, wait, we're not supposed to say it like that. I mean, we're offering content that's humorous and valuable to you. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So, uh, the... By the way, uh... Did I say sponsor? Oh, here it is sponsor. We're good. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're, we're good to go. Uh, let's yeah, do the pre-ramble. Yeah. Pre-ramble, pre-ramble, pre-ramble! I got a pre-ramble, you got a pre-ramble, pre-ramble! Too long. Of the show. Too long. Okay, <laughs> it's time for It's a fun dude. We're gonna what were we what was I gonna say? <laughs> uh, we're gonna prospect some fun. Yeah. So uh, the fun zone today not as funny as it was. Yeah. Uh the mm. the the fun zone today is gonna start off with death. Oh. That's we talk about the sad passing of Egon. Mm-hmm. Yes. The man who made Groundhog Day Ghostbusters, all of that, uh, he's, he's died yet, yeah, but you probably already know Harold Ramis. Uh, the reason I'm even bringing this up right now is uh, they mentioned they're going to do Ghostbusters 3 now, which they said they were doing, and then they weren't doing, and then they're doing, and they weren't doing. What the hell, Paul? I'll still believe it when they start filming it. They said he had such a small part, and they're like, no, it's still no, on. No, it's no. still on. It was supposed if. It was supposed to come out. There was like a slide from Sony or something that it was supposed to be out like in 2009, then 2011, then for you know this year. Whatever. Go, Paul. Yeah. When it happens, it happens. Do you think? Word of the week. Yeah. Week, week, week. Today's fun word of the week. Why do you repeat on week? Is oh, well, that's week, week, week. <laughs> yeah. Rusty <laughs> trombone. <laughs> The rusty trombone. Rusty trombone. Hmm. I know about my trusty trombone, but not the rusty one. Ah. That must be when you uh, you haven't had sex long enough. It's been too long. Um, and you've gotten rusty. It's a rusty um, trombone. Sure. Uh, it's when uh, somebody plays your trombone and it doesn't work very well. And then you jump on someone's butt and go down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is it? So a rusty WD trombone. WD is uh, to get rimmed while receiving a hearty reach around, thus resembling a trombone player in full chorus. Hmm. Why is it rusty, though? Oh, yeah, it is! <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, oh, hey oh, at home, you gotta try it. Do the rim, that. and then the thing, and it's like a trombone. All right. All right. Joey acted it out. <laughs> okay, go for it. So now, I've decided to change what it is. It's blinded me with science. No tech talk. Blinded me with science. Oh, wait, no. he's got science. 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 What the hell? I'm stealing Daryl's science. Okay, then I'm going to do a tech story next time. Go ahead. Screw you. I dare you. You need tech talk. <laughs> oh, let's no, watch our science. The reason is because uh, there's a new machine time. that this guy has designed 
where you don't need to demolish buildings anymore. You take these machines up to it, to the concrete, and it uses high pressure water, and it, it breaks up the concrete, sucks it in, dries it out, and turns it into bags of concrete you can re re reuse, and then you take the rebar, which is now clean, and reuse it for next concrete. So, so you don't have to it's right here. the building, huh? That's what it'll look like. But you'd like. have to strip wow. it, wouldn't you? That's what it does. Well, I mean, what about like like Strips drywall down, and baby. wood and no, no, this is just for concrete. Oh, it's for con okay, just for concrete. Okay. Huh. It's a really cool idea. It, it was just barely designed by the student, so it hasn't been made yet. But it looks like it, everything that he says is concrete feasible. Just grounded, right? Rock and hey, well, yeah. what's that sound? Oh, it's just the like rebar bot collecting your house. <laughs> yeah, I <can't. laughs> should have ignored those eviction notices. <laughs> really? I can see closed. through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's that smell? It smells like science! Oh yeah! Or it smells like Tech Talk. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, Why did well, you get two get, minutes? We get double two. Oh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> just, he got extra time too. Oh, okay. Alright. <laughs> not, not a whole two, but it was. Yeah. I don't. It took a minute before I caught it. Well, not a whole minute. Just go out! Dude! Yeah. 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 So, um, in, in Japan, they basically found out how to turn mouse stem or mouse blood cells into stem cells. And they're working on finding out if this will actually work for people. And this happened around the end of January when they made their reports. And, um, you know, there's been controversy about getting embryo stem cells and things like that. So this is yet another development that might lead to us being able to develop, uh, you know, organs in a Petri dish or cells that will help repair yourself uh, easily. And what they did is they just put the... Um, blood cells and a little bit of acid, like a light acid solution, for about 30 minutes, and then they re-injected it into the mice, and they found out that those blood cells apparently turned into stem cells for liver, kidney, brain Interesting. cells. Interesting. Acid, huh? Yep, all that stuff. Acid. And, oh, wait. But one last thing, because you got to check the comments on this story, because in the comment section, someone said, well, one time I... Um, Oh, damn it. Uh, uh, hey, never mind. Epic Go on. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> that big deal, a little acid once made my guitar into a snake. Okay, no. Oh, uh, uh, oh, that, was, okay, that was almost worth it. Yeah, yeah, almost, almost yeah. not quite. Kind of. All right, so today I mean, is fun. When when Daryl last week said we were going to do f fear and, and uh, uncertainty, I thought it was like going to be an anxiety episode. Like, oh, how we're scared of things in life. And you're like, but no, it's all about like it's the world. Like, who's making us afraid in life? Probably ourselves. Women. And the media. So give us a quick explanation about uh, what where we're going with this. Okay, well, I think that there's this, um, in the way news is reported, there's this, this overlying kind of fear of everything. Like, um, you know, crime, <laughs> crime gets reported uh, as opposed to feel-good stories, uh, by and large. When you talk about world news, it's often about, you know, disasters in a certain area. If it or, bleeds, it leads. Exactly. Yeah. That's the whole thing. And or it talks, period. A lot of documentaries that are... About trying Unless to their convince boobs. you. If they're boobs, then it leads before. Oh, blood. right. Yeah. Uh, go okay. ahead, Daryl. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Daryl. So a lot of documentaries use that kind of tactic. Um, I think there are a lot of commentators on uh, TV and cable who use those tactics as well. And it's just a matter of, you know, let's investigate why that tactic is used and some things <laughs> that we can something. do to maybe prevent it. He's laughing at me, and I don't I'm know why. I'm not laughing at you. Your, oh. The period reminds me of a Cherry 7-Up. My period what? <laughs> your period. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're talking about, Paul. Okay, Cherry 7-Up now will okay. remind me of period. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. I did used to kind of like it. Or maybe Dr. Pepper. Cherry I don't know. You, <laughs> okay. you totally ruined periods for Jim. Sorry. You totally ruined my period. It's all about commas. Okay, so what's the culture of fear? What are the motives? Who are the culprits, and who are the victims? So, Daryl, what is the culture of fear? I mean, are we talking about everything is, uh, is is it being used for profit, or what's the reason for this, you think? I think that, it, in general, the whole idea of being fearful of everything does kind of keep people docile. Like, it's uh, just, like, hole up in your houses and be afraid of the world because everything's out to get you. And it just kind of leads to this kind of mentality where you're easier to control because people can put ideas into your head through mass media and just kind of say, hey, look, this is a really bad thing. You should be watching out for it. And 
is kind of a means for control for a lot of outlets, I believe. Interesting. There's a lot of I think it's, uh, nope, nope, uh, Go ahead, hit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what I was just going to say is this, that with the, with the media, either you're watching something that they are using to scare you back <laughs> to watching the sitcoms where they want you to stay. So you don't think of anything. <laughs> they balance it out. Right. Yeah. You sit there and watch sitcoms the whole time and laugh, and everything's okay. That's true, yeah. Because um, <laughs> there is that that numbing effect of, you know, like, you do get so much news in the evening, then you got to have something lighter to wash it down. It's like dessert after your little FUD attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a FUD attack. Paul? Uh, I would say there's a lot of motives, too, of... Uh, of profiting off of it. I mean, if you think back to like the Y2K mm -hmm. and the fear they were putting that the whole world was going to be destroyed, there was like kits out there you can buy of like, you know, survival kits when oh, electricity kits. goes. You can probably buy a kit too. Especially the Y2K. Especially the Y2K. 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 Don't Oh no 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 no! I thought he said you could buy tits. Right? Honestly, I thought that's what he said. I see a lot of advertising for things too, where they start the commercial with. You know, the world economy is collapsing and the dollar will be worthless soon. Invest in gold and silver. Gold, like, gold, gold! You know, it's like they... It seems like a lot of that kind of marketing is geared towards seniors in particular because yeah. it's like... Mm -hmm. oh, this is the South really, Park episode. It's really scary, like, senior <laughs> citizens so they feel like they need all these products. I, I think you should kill yourself right now. Yeah. Just get a gun and kill... You shouldn't say stuff like that. <laughs> oh my god, these are five-minute rounds, aren't they? Yeah. It's good. Okay. Because right. I'm about to bring up what I say about okay. this. Cool. And this this is what I think. Uh, fear and... <laughs> shut up, you dick. You're the second dick tonight. You got two dicks on me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I... I... <laughs> Paul, just never mind. I wouldn't admit that, Joey. Okay, yeah. so here's here's my thing, though. And it, it harkens back to our Kim first episode like of storytelling. When I was in a script cl a scripting class uh, at Cal State Long Beach, they said, why is it the news is the news? Why do you watch the news? What makes it happen? Makes you want to watch it. And the reason is, is because it's a story. And yeah. it comes back to the idea of storytelling. And one of the most important parts of storytelling is drama. Is not just drama, but conflict. Yeah, you gotta have the conflict in there. If you yeah. don't have conflict, it's not interesting. And so, my thing is, honestly, news would not be watched if it could not be a story. And I think that's I think right. that some of what you say is true, and there is fear mongering for profit. But I think that's not what most news organizations are doing. I think most news organizations are just trying to to be the best. And so they want to get something that <laughs> they want to get something that's that's, that's interesting. on for something success. <laughs> so you know success. But they're they're just they're just trying to get uh, they're trying to get more profit. success to you, ill one who just sneezed. <laughs> what yeah, the hell is like that, that about? That. I don't know, whatever. On. All right, come on. I feel like you're getting that, Joey. Come on. The news wants you. They need to sell advertising. They want you to watch. They're not they trying to control to you. I don't think. Well, I, then they're controlling how, you to watch, right? Um, uh, uh, look at look at a car chase. You can watch car chase for two flipping hours. Yeah, it's true. And, they're t and they just talk about the same thing over yeah, and over again. Like, he may have a gun. He may go like that. It's like seven it's like, hours since the car chase called the Daytona 500. Yeah. <laughs> You're just That's waiting true, for yeah. a crap. They're taking a left <laughs> turn! Look! They're taking another left turn! That's exactly what I was thinking, too. Yeah. <laughs> but no, and that's what I think. I think that's th that... It's interesting to look at those that are using fear to control us, but I yeah. don't think it's as widespread. Well, you're hitting upon something that I'm sure is going to come up later. Is that you know it's not uh, we're we're I'm kind of implying assigning blame here, but uh, you know in, in some ways we're to blame too because we want to watch this stuff that's exciting and dramatic. Therefore, you know if someone's marketing it to us out of uh, to get successful headlines and link bait on the internet and stuff like that. Then in a way, it's our own fault because it's something we want. <laughs> All right, so what are the ultimate goals of FUD? And this goes into what you said, control, coercion, a call to action, a diversion tactic to discredit dissidents, to maintain the status quo, to attack the status quo. You know, this is sounding very conspiracy-like, Daryl, ah, which is yeah. not very you. I, uh, <laughs> very. It's like, they want to control the steam but of I, government. I'm trying to strike the fear of God into our listeners so that they'll do something. You! Oh, no! Wait, oh. wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> Hold on. It's, See, I, I think that exhausted. it is wholly our, our us to blame because if we have a news hour that shows all the good and wonderful things that are happening in the world, I don't think anybody would watch it. No, that'd be like watching those um, platform breathe or whatever commercials they are over and over again. 
What? Platform breeze. Yeah, you know, I've seen that one. The, like the kid, like the lady leaves the purse at the at the bus stop. Oh, and the kid that's right. It, and then oh, right, the cops right, right. think he's stealing it, but yeah. the kid's like, oh, good job. See, See that tells a story without being fearful. Yeah, but it, yeah. it totally gets you. You're be you, the thing is, you're you're watching it and you're totally being prejudiced. You're like, that guy's totally stole the purse. Yeah, he yeah. took the purse. Just yeah. look at him. He looks like a total criminal. Yeah. Notice they made him white though, because otherwise, oh, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Wait, a white criminal and not in a business suit? <laughs> what the hell? How many strange? All right. So okay. <laughs> uh, so okay, you're saying that it's for coercion. Who do you think's doing this? Is this? Let me ask you this, Cyril. Is this this is an organized okay, group that's it, doing this, or is it individuals? That I'm not talking about like New World Order here. Um, New although New there is World an aspect order. to <laughs> certain, yeah, you know, I think centers of power do kind of get together because, like, a lot of the power in this country is big corporations. They can buy their politicians to get things passed that they want, and then who owns the mass media other than corporations? So it's part of why I support. You know the democratization of things on the internet because it helps us kind of take the power away to a degree. Because when there's more than one channel to reach people, you don't have one power just kind of sitting there going, "All right, we're gonna feed the message we want to feed." So, so you're saying that like in the boardrooms of like some big companies that they're going like, "We need to have more control over these people. We need to get our media outlets and have them do this." Is yeah, that because when you say a company, it's you talk about like the board. Right. I don't members, think right? they have absolute control, but I do think that they send memos to the uh, news desks and say, "Hey, we need to have a story on this topic." And ah, it's going to be naturally portrayed in a kind of dark way. I yeah. think they're saying exactly what you're saying, Joey. Except they're using different language, so it doesn't sound like that. Ah, that's what they're saying. Interesting. And sometimes the whole thing. You know, like, FUD happens a lot, too, with documentary makers. Like, there are a lot of documentaries out there that sometimes try to expose this very yeah. kind of thing. Like, they say, like, look, there's a vast conspiracy trying to scare you. <laughs> Be afraid. And it's kind of ironic that it turns out that way. But I think there are a lot of filmmakers where they use this tactic just as a way to get attention, make the uh, documentary interesting. Like, if you're going to talk about, uh, like, let's take Gasland as an example. If you're going to talk about <laughs> That's not. the problem of fracking. <laughs> what? Take gas land. No <laughs> problem with that. Fud and <laughs> fracking. Room. Fracking. So if you're going to illustrate that problem, what you do is you light, um, you know, a lighter Your under the open. faucet and see flames <laughs> shooting out. So that's the whole thing. Like, look. Fracking causes all this, yeah. you know, natural gas in your lands. <laughs> However, okay, half half of our audience, <laughs> all, all one of them, are, are, are have no idea what you're talking about because it just sounds like you're farting and, you're and fracking lighting your gas. Is that, is that queef and swearing? <laughs> oh, who hasn't seen trailers no, for gas? Okay, though, look right? up a trailer Frack? for Gasland. I have okay. never heard of Gasland ever. Okay, dude, I had Gasland the other night, dude. <laughs> you guys have Gasland every Thursday here. You know, it, it, does, it does kind of sound like it should be a Terry Gilliam film. Like it's the sequel to Brazil or something. <laughs> Gasland. Where, I don't know. From uh, Glue. Where his pants are moist and the women run free. <laughs> it's about natural gas. Okay? I don't know. It's just came to my mind. So there's this famous scene from that documentary where they light a faucet on fire. It's just someone's faucet. Like, Instead of the water coming out, there's natural gas, and it can be burned to make a flame. The thing that they don't necessarily say, like in all fairness in that documentary, is that that kind of thing happens naturally in natural water supplies with or without fracking. But they're using it as an indictment. Fracking is when you fracture um, the sediment to extract more oil and natural oh, gas. I believe it's a swear word so, in Battlestar. That's what I was thinking too. Fracking. <laughs> it's probably gas. a swear word in Firefly also. <laughs> no, it's, like it's, those it's Garam true. frackers. <laughs> but, and I agree with you on this. Yeah. More, more than the whole media thing, which sounds, I, I feel like a lot of the media thing is just trying to get people to watch and that's right. what we want to watch. I agree though with documentaries. They do try to control how you think and and they want you to, to see their side and they'll, they'll and do they, scare yeah. They usually showcase only one side as well. So, uh, what are the telltale signs of FUD? And how can you spot a FUD argument? Because I agree with you on this, that if there's going to be something where someone is trying to get me to be afraid of something, mm -hmm. and it may not be logical, I want to know about it. Right, right. So, uh, what do we got? Slippery Slope presenting... Scare tactics. Opinion. This reminds me a lot of the episode we did on um, logical... Logical Not a lot of information. Yeah. Misinformation. Well, I think that's, that's one of the things that I wanted to highlight there, is that um, a lot of logical fallacies are used to defend FUD ideas. Well, I so, think that's the important thing is you have to have critical thinking so that you can pick out which is a FUD and which isn't. Exactly. Yeah, because you can correlate anything. 
And they yeah. can highlight that in any, any documentary, any way right. of fear. You got to be able to find the, the FUD so you don't get all FUD packing. <laughs> <laughs> By the Those way, you linked. Uh, Kale linked an article which we should probably put in the show notes to some um, organic food, natural, yeah. naturalistic fallacy kind of stuff, um, where they have a lot of indictments about manufactured foods or GMOs and things like that. Where a lot of it is pretty unfounded, or they'll do things. There's one in particular on there that has to do with a chemical that's put in white bread. And um, oh yeah, do the you subway have that thing up right going now? on. Birds yeah. right, or right. Right. Yeah, they put yeah. baby food to seal the to seal the uh, glass to dangerous. metal, doesn't it? Baby food. Well, like a jars and stuff. I don't, I don't know, like know. the baby food jars and stuff. Hey, uh, just to or, go while you're looking that up, just to go back, wasn't there? I mean, even though we, we all kind of uh, are going for uh, you know greenhouse going yay. Uh, global warming and everything from right. that last episode but wasn't that totally what gore did on um i haven't seen it but it, oh, incoherent truth yeah wasn't it even though it, <laughs> incoherent truth an inconvenient truth but it could be the truth because <laughs> even even though it, it seems like he he was right by what you guys were right. you know what the science is showing didn't he go way overboard i haven't seen it but i hear it's just it's a lot of fear mongering has anyone here seen it I haven't well, seen it because I'm afraid of man bear pigs. Like, you know, it's a fault. <laughs> it's a fault of most documentaries out there, whether I agree with the subject matter or not. Oh, right. You know, yeah, it's oh, just kind of like a, very a good fact point. of life in a way. That, that a lot of documentaries are going to be like that. Like, I really, I really would like to see a documentary that's balanced and actually shows both sides. But where do you find? No, because a filmmaker you know? will always have some sort of. Their, you're, you're seeing their point of view. And almost everyone involved has an axe to grind. Because sure. this is part of it, like, not only, like, Joey, you brought up a great point with the marketing. Yeah. Like, it's easier to market something that has this kind of FUD in it. Another aspect oh, of it, though, is how do you get funding you. for a big, expensive <laughs> documentary without <laughs> getting sure some wins. proponents who have an axe to grind? Like, someone has yeah. skin in the game, and they're going to say, all right, we'll fund your climate warming thing because we want to get the message out. Do documentaries... We don't want to get a balanced message out. We just want to get, get the, the message, message out. out. Do documentaries... <clears throat> They're supposed to be about truth, you know? So let, right. Are they always controversial? This you're thinking like about so, documentaries <laughs> before... You're thinking about do documentaries before 1980. Oh, After okay. 1980, yeah. there's no such thing as balanced documentaries. I don't know why, but... That's because if you go to like the, the you know, Michael I was about to say the Learning Channel, there's no learning on that channel anymore. Yeah, yeah. there's no science on the Science TLC. Channel. There's no Discovery on this. Actually, on Discovery and Science are still I've heard TLC more or less okay. The History, the channel. Channel. History Channel. History Channel. Ancient Aliens Network. on the History Channel. Yeah, I know. Really? Oh my god. I know. Some of it's pretty bad. Seriously. But TLC. <laughs> TLC used to be the Learning Channel. And now. Oh my gosh, that was Honey Boo Boo as a prospect. <laughs> 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 uh, but okay, uh, Mel Melkin with, uh, Dirty Products. I mean, dairy products. Does that have a thing with the bread? <laughs> dirty products. The, yeah, the bread one, right. Subway's in trouble, or what Subway did right now is it's in their <laughs> now, bread. I want to Who's point out something now? they said on the Well, that's another one, man. I want to ever talk about the Gatorade. <laughs> bread yeah. with Cassian bro mate. Yes. Hey, my bro mate. <laughs> I mean, that's anyway. the thing with Subway. So what's going on so with So potassium bread? bromate, okay, it's this thing that's in <laughs> bread to help it... Um, Turn it, white. Yeah, it turns and whiter fluff. and fluffier. Mm -hmm. They put it in such trace amounts that it's like one twenty thousandth of the FDA allowed amount. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, this article will say it's banned in these countries. You know, like they Canada, China, it, right? and the European yeah. Union. Right. Why is it banned, Daryl? The reason why it's banned is that workers in the... Like, they say it's also linked to all these different... Thyroid like, problems. Asthma, thyroid problems, things like that. Well, that happens if you're a worker in the plant and you're breathing this stuff in mass quantities. So they banned it for people to breathe in in places where they don't have proper respiratory protection. Yeah. They're not banning it because it gives you those things just by eating it in the bread. Yeah. And a lady so it's got a complete are we switch, extending? switch and bait yeah. switch. Are we extending? No, no, no. no. Well, real quick, a lady, got a, a lady got a uh, petition and now Subway's taking it out. Right, right. right. So they caved in. Yeah. They caved. Did a bad press. FUD press, by the way. What? FUD when does legitimate concern cross the line into FUD? What's acceptable and what's over the top? So are we talking just documentaries here? I think in, just to sum up that, um, just any sort of reporting or whatever, like this this thing that Kale linked to with all these food scare things, 
they're oh, uh, so being intellectually yeah. dishonest because they're misportraying the reasons why certain things were banned. Right. They're also saying it's linked to this, linked to that. Well, if you want to make a tenuous link to anything, you can say this thing causes cancer because there might be some yeah. studies that has be. a really tenuous link. Or it might say, you know, if you have this, like, um, safety in artificial sweeteners is one of those things that's often used in, mm -hmm. like, FUD reporting. Like, it's unnatural, therefore unsafe. But when you look at it, if it, it can be toxic at certain levels, it'll cause uh, formaldehyde in your stomach based on the way that it's digested. The thing is that you won't reach anywhere near like damaging levels of formaldehyde unless you're eat, drinking something like 200 liters a day of soda. That's how you'd get enough artificial sweetener to cause something bad to happen. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things like you can say this leads to a, a bad chemical in your system. However, that chemical is in all of your foods naturally anyway. You can eat a dozen or more things every day that have a trace amount of formaldehyde in them. It's a matter of toxicity levels. Even water and oxygen are toxic at appropriate mm -hmm. levels, right? So those things are obviously necessary for us to live. Now, formaldehyde isn't, uh, so far as I know, required for you to live. However, it has to meet a certain threshold before it becomes damaging to you. And that's one thing that they leave out of a lot of these reports is like, oh, this thing leads to formaldehyde in your stomach. Yeah, but it's such a small amount, it's not going to harm you. So, well, the, the, go ahead. Well, like, um, on the list Kale had, there's like the Gatorade sports drinks, sugary drinks, whatever, on there. And it, it's, it's a lot of these, they have misinformation. So, it was linking some, uh, some full part of it that causes ADHD and they did some study to where <laughs> kids were taking all, uh, drinking all this and getting ADHD and over hyper this and that I'm like, yeah, they're drinking sugary sports drinks that are making them hyper. They don't have ADHD, they're hopped up on sugar. They're hopped <laughs> right. up on these drinks. So it's like, here, drink all this and see what it does. Oh, yeah. they're like this, it must be ADHD, it must be Asperger, whatever That's they're doing. Bad so it's like, they, they correlate stuff to yeah. just... Uh, so information I think in, that, that well, in a nutshell, totally correct. It's the I intellectual in nutshell, intellectual um, dishonesty of certain arguments. That's when it crosses the line. Well, like see, if you can honestly say, "Here's something you should be concerned about," or misinformation, yeah. well, or misinformation, because yeah. someone might be putting right. something they think is accurate and then it's not. And well, that's yeah. what the fear there is. Was, there was this change in thinking, uh, especially with uh, uh, consumer groups or uh, you know. Uh, Nonprofits where they used to try to convince people through honest means mm -hmm. and but there was this change in thinking because they started thinking well if I'm correct oh, right. then it's okay to lie to them sure if the outcome the, is what needs to be way yeah. to hell it's called a paved, slippery slope uh, with yeah. Yeah. good intentions it, yes exactly. that's the saying and that's, that's what's happened <laughs> that's because now that's, everybody does that you're actually bringing up slippery slope in a different context <laughs> you're right. you're right. but that's that's right. good though I like that but the, the slippery slope I was talking about was uh, usually penis. that's an argument like saying, like <laughs> prohibiting gay marriage, right? On your penis. <laughs> yeah, I would prohibit that personally, but I'm not going to prohibit someone else who wants it. <laughs> well, so, they want to have gay marriage on your penis, like two little people. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like really like a, little. Like a cake topper? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> <laughs> we are the littles. If they're, if they're we're getting, on your penis, don't you know? Listen, if they're getting married on Number my penis, they don't have to be that little. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, moving on. <laughs> Freaking guys are getting exploded. So, I, so the slippery slope. I never argument knew you mad at my. Jeez. All right. Pop the champagne cork. <laughs> ah, yeah. Right. Like a, White frosting a, for everybody. Uh, uh, hurry up the rails already. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Uh, Butter frosting. <laughs> no, this, is where, this is where fear comes in because, like the, like the subway. Yeah, I'd be afraid of that. Yes. Like, let's get back. Like the subway, you have this the lady who does the subway. And now people are waiting for subway stands. because it, it because, stands? Really? Two minutes? Yeah. Okay. Because okay. so we didn't get to really. There's this huge people. fear now that this lady has caused with a petition. There's like 60,000 people signed it. <laughs> I've heard people Excuse at me. work talking about how the subway uh, bread and oh my God, we can't eat this because we have it on campus and all this other crap. So now Subway's losing customers yeah. out of fear right. of misinformation. How would you know? What what you've got some special knowledge into Subway? Yes. When I worked at Subway as a sandwich artist, <laughs> if anything, yes. they should ban the tomatoes, right? <laughs> hey, I go to Subway regularly now for lunch, but I eat the salads. 
Okay. Just because I'm trying to stay away from the bread. The bread just, I believe bread is bad for you anyway because it's a oh, no, product I mean, of... Yeah, like carbs. We, yeah. we have diets with too many carbs yeah. in them, but go on. That's a whole different... Go on. But no, no. No, uh, I what went to the subway. Yeah. What? There's no Did secret, you have any more on subway? There's no secret subway society. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. No, what were you going to say yes, yes, yes. about yes. your, your insights? Oh, I have no insight. Oh, okay. Okay, I want to start the secret subway yeah. society now. But uh, what I was going to say was that... Hey, the SSS? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm trying to say see Kyle, Joe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, that's, that's that's hey, I just heard they're selling Hit, uh, a wow. signed copy of Hitler's Mein oh, Kampf yeah. today. Yeah. I'm sure. Well, so no, what I wanted to say was through. that. Jeez. Is that, um, is there any... You know, like, a slippery slope <clears throat> argument? Dude, I got something to say! It's like, oh, you elect <laughs> one Nazi in the office, then all of a sudden they're murdering everyone. I got... Ex- oh, I used my extends for this. <laughs> okay, you did. What I'm saying right. is... Hitler was bullied. <laughs> like, <laughs> was it, wasn't there... Isn't there publications that you can usually <laughs> trust? We don't wouldn't, like Hitler. Wouldn't critical thinkers... <sighs> Eventually, be drawn to the correct publications that 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 do not do these things. And are there such critical think? Uh, yeah, critical like things? science journals, right? But and those are kind of boring. But I mean, is there something right, more mainstream? Kind of dry, they don't make the mainstream. Though. Is there something more mainstream that I mean, like, like uh, Skeptic like Society type Nature, stuff? Nature magazine is not so bad. But so it, is there always science stuff, or is there actually critical? Nature? I'm not talking science. I'm talking Where critical they thinking. The articles? Not the main. I don't think uh, in the mainstream. There should the be, scientists? and that's the whole yeah, thing. Much. That's not so much yeah. a normal. Okay, that's not normal. Journal. <laughs> All right, fine. It's not normal. <laughs> okay, dear, what's your damn pet peeve? <laughs> it's about documentaries, so we kind of already talked about that. Because mm-hmm. um, yeah, documentaries being so lopsided. But you mm-hmm. had some insight on that, Kale. <laughs> Let's talk about that some more. <laughs> what? <laughs> Documentaries. Well, it's because I had Daryl watch this uh, this documentary called Ethos with Woody Harrelson scaring the crap out of me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, he used to be well, such a nice was, bartender. They were really and... good because the way they did it was right. they they started out really believable. He's karate chopping with and... his hands. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving a back massage. There you go. It's the kitty back massage. Anyway, so they start out really good, backing up what they're saying, and eventually. By the end of it, they are gone. They've gone off into they're like in doing La La Land, nine eleven, yeah, and conspiracies like and shit. <laughs> Things have been proven yeah. not to have occurred, but they're making it sound like oh, they have, they have. They, you know, you know what started, really scared me was um, in Walt Disney World. I went on the ride, um, the People Mover. No. <laughs> Dude, no, Tron was, was such awesome. a good documentary. Mission, Mission Space. World of Tron. They just take you on a tour of the Tron world. <laughs> I love that. Great documentary. Go on. Mission Space in Epcot Center. So you're on a centrifuge, and you're supposed to be like you're flying into Mars and stuff. But right. there are warnings yeah. everywhere, and Gary yeah. Sinise is all over and doing his little commentary he's about like, the like, mission. mission. And side. every time he finishes, he says, "This is a turbulent ride. ride. If you want to get out of I line, I've, go I've, ahead and get it." You know, and I'm like, that. it scared me, and I'm like, "What the hell am I doing?" So I went yeah. on it anyways. Yeah, I went on it too, and and you know what it, it is? Not that bad. As long as you don't move your head, because because oh, you're in a centrifuge, right, right. and as long as you don't move your head, it's kind of like, oh, I'm getting the gravity feeling. But as soon as yeah. you move your head, you're like, ah! Then <laughs> and you realize because it's like your head's a gyroscope. Or remember the centrifuge at, at Magic Mountain? Oh yeah, like uh, I would write it over and over again. But I remember that thing was like hardcore because once you're pressed against the wall, if you so much as like move your head to the side, it's like bam. Yeah, and your neck would go. And people twisted. would puke on that and go. Or one time I'm to look at my feet, right, and I'm looking down, and I got going fast, and my left my head up is like bam. <laughs> <laughs> Knocked off the headphones. My headphones flew off and everything. Okay. But. Uh, uh, but I, I, maybe we can come down to what I was talking about before. Is that does this just mean there's going to be fud in everything, and that we can't? We I guess we have to be critical thinkers, and wherever we are, we've got to take everything with a grain of salt and look for a logical fallacies. Well, I didn't want. I also don't want to portray it as being that like fud is always wrong either, because sometimes there are things that you have to be wary of, like. Um, you could say that, like, even entertainment, like movies like Armageddon and Deep Impact, they have a certain FUD factor about making you fearful of the greater universe, because out of nowhere, some big asteroid could threaten to take us out. That would right? be a great topic for about in, in two minutes. Would it be? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, well, fear you can't too. even follow your own outline. Though. I know, I'm, I'm getting ahead. Of, like, I was ahead <laughs> on the documentary. You're getting ahead right now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, I don't want to watch. There's this wedding happening on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh my god, there's a wedding on my dick! Now, you know, fear and uncertainty and doubt is, is huge in the courtroom. 
that lawyers use it all the time to get to get <laughs> people off. That's so funny. <laughs> like OJ. But actually, that, that's a good point. Oh, in the courtroom, hey, it, if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> I bit it a little. Don't that fit. Wait, it down. Well, that's that's that voice. That that wrong being, my guy. Uh, Sorry, she, being manipulative oh like that. Yeah. <laughs> Because that is, a, I think that's part of what this really is for, is a, it's a powerful form of manipulation, because if you can make people fearful of things. Just before we get on to the next subject, I think um, I could bring up one, an aspect of that. One of the things people bring up a lot is, uh, like, think of the children. I hate think, that. Think, and I'm a teacher, I hate that. Think of women and, and their rights, and think of children, and, like, always going for, like, the vulnerable, innocent people, the same, oh, like, yeah. not saying women are vulnerable. I always, and okay, innocent, I always say, why are we doing this when we haven't solved all the problems here on Earth? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we're never going to solve all the problems here on Earth. you got to hey, be more why diverse. try unless everything is perfect yeah. in a utopia? Yeah. Come on now. Then we can go ahead and... Let's and, achieve and, utopia first, and then we move on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but no, I, yeah, that, it's for the children thing. They're really good. The hell out of me. And the, that's, really a, that's for the a fear children? tactic. Never is. It's like, you know, like that big white we should guy support with all the censorship. We, think of the children. On the commercial, you know, for 10 cents a day, you can feed a family. Oh, yeah. yeah. In the arms of an angel. Well, that's Wait, no, that's, that's a, a, a that South one. Park that's a one, one yeah. where Sally Struther was holding, yeah, yeah, was holding food away from the starving kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Making them go, oh! That was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> that was, you know, uh, like misinformation a lot of stuff on is also <laughs> it's very like wrong. people trying to get petitions for for what? polls. Like AB32 or AB whatever. A poll. Yeah. No, you stand on a road. In like, politics. You know, yes. yeah. Sign here, save the children. You know, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. like, True. what do you mean? You're what are you really doing? And you're signing like, right. you know, save the are children from farting. No, I just wanted to say that. Okay, uh, <laughs> save the children from gas. <laughs> Let's talk about Armageddon and stuff you were trying to say before. Hey, nice entertainment and food. Okay, so yeah, the entertainment uh, often kind of has this kind of thing, and it's not just movies. <laughs> what like type of entertainment will you be having for the reception on your penis? <laughs> Fud packing. I don't. <laughs> that was better than my fud packing joke, really. All right. All you right. Can have a band or a DJ. <laughs> a band and a DJ. There's nice. room. All right. Uh, yeah. All uh, right. Open bar. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to go to the open part. Uh, all right. Okay. So entertainment. You were saying like Armageddon makes us think, oh, there's asteroids that could happen. And then like think about like action films. Like everybody's a terrorist. You know, Twenty-four. Like, uh, right, 24, like all the threats to the U.S. and like nuclear facilities are going to blow up and there's a bomb somewhere. And um, House of Cards, there's always corruption at the top and all this other stuff, even though there is, but still. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there? Well, I think that's what... Dude, you're becoming more of a conspiracy. Yeah. Conspir- I think that's what makes FUD so effective is because it's almost always based with a little bit of truth. Right. And because of that, it makes it much more believable. Wasn't it Hitler who said that <laughs> a lie... <laughs> <laughs> by the way, yeah. I, lies make the lie as big as possible so they'll believe it. Uh, by the way, I think that make the wedding as big as possible. I, I'd like to just say right now, <laughs> I think Putin is the next Hitler. Putin. <laughs> Putin. Okay, for, I've always been scared of Putin. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Hey, that was the guy that cast my hair. We wanted a gas attack. <laughs> 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 Massive <of> Putin's. <laughs> no, but really, Putin is. <laughs> Wait, now it's hey, funny. <laughs> hey, look, look. About, he's what? dude. You gotta be serious. He's scary. He's some scary. Like you, you know, you notice how the uh, Germany was World War One, and then they they kind of got defeated, and then Hitler came and used their their defeat and their low level to bring them back up again. I feel like that guy, which I'm not going to say his name, is doing that for Russia, and we're going to have like a revamp of the Cold War. You know why Russia did so good in the Olympics? Because he was holding. It was fixed. The, no, he was holding the families hostage, and like, you fall on that ice, hmm. your father's dead. Really? Yeah. He's like yeah. a James Bond villain. So yeah. Joey's pretty fuddy about because the they really wouldn't have that? done that back when it was USSR. No. <laughs> right? That would have been awesome. I mean, not awesome, but now, I think that he uses be, fud. Uh, Oh yeah, he uses fud or he, <laughs> or people fud. He makes it him. sound like some sort of stinky soap. You know? Putin uses, uses fud. fud man. Man. What was that movie Chud? Uh, <laughs> he uses chud? fud. Uh, what else was? <laughs> what? Uh, I'm <laughs> trying to wabbit. scare you, you rascally uh, wabbit. Uh, <laughs> hey, so so if you're in <laughs> Russian, you might not only be Putin, but you might be European. <laughs> 
Nice job, Daryl. Very good. Nice job. Yeah, that was nice, Daryl. Very nice good. Job. Yeah. Nice job. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> you can uh, count on this. This is cool. fun in entertainment, I'll tell you right now. This okay. Is all... Fear. I had a different point about the entertainment, though, is that it's not always bad. Because, like, we should be thinking about the possibility of us being taken out by an asteroid, so why not prepare for that e eventual possibility? And if it takes scaring people a little to open their eyes and make them think about it, then fine. Yeah. Well, I well, think I, I'm, a, I'm with you on that, because when we were watching House of Cards this last this last season that we finished yeah, just before this podcast... Came out, your head peeked out of the blanket for a moment. And right. Like, oh, my God! Anyway, so <laughs> what happened was is that... <laughs> I'm going to tell you the whole story now. No, <laughs> House of Cards. Is that no, no, my, alert. no, my point is, is that House are. of Cards, when I watch it, I think it's educational in a way because it's now when I see what's happening in Washington, I can look and see if they're doing those type of things mm -hmm. which m make you l think they're doing criminal activity. So I think it's beneficial. That's nice, Paul. Well, one movie uh, that really <laughs> used fear and, and is certainly in doubt is, is fear mongering was Rocky IV. Because Ivan Drago <laughs> killed Apollo Creed, and then Rocky's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this guy in Russia." So he goes into Russia, and you're like, "Oh my God, he killed Apollo. He's gonna kill Rocky." So you had fear, you had a sense of certainty, you had doubt that Rocky can do it, but he did it. Yeah, thank you. I was Paul. fearful. You're welcome. Very I was fearful of Stallone's so the correlation for that movie to tell <laughs> was. <laughs> Wow. Perfect timing. <laughs> You'll never know. It's excellent. People are bad with numbers. Hey, I stopped fearing for Stallone's career after Dread, because that ruined it. Just just saying. <laughs> and Demolition Man. All right, what's next? Oh. Uh, Taco people are bad with numbers. You afraid oh, of right, flying? Right, right. Well, you should be more afraid of driving your yeah. car, damn it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that, that whole thing with flying is, is just because a, a, an airplane crash is just horrific. Right. You get a car accident, you get a car, it's like, you see on the news, oh, this one person died, and they're, you but know, the it really odds. doesn't feel, but the odds, the odds are, are in your favor for flying, of course. Yeah. Well, you see, some people are like, oh, I might win the lottery, but then they're not afraid of, like, dying of cancer, which is like, what are the odds, right? You know, yeah. You should be concerned about things that affect, afflict a lot of different people. 90% of the things I worried about in my life never happened. See? Very true. And the other 10%? Really kick my ass, right? True. Diarrhea. <laughs> Thank you, Mark Twain. But no, that's uh, we we were just listening to a book called "How to Stop Worrying and Start mm -hmm. Living" by Daryl Carnegie, and it's from the fifties. That's why last episode we were doing all those <laughs> jokes. <laughs> like, I heard the first couple <laughs> chapters. I started yeah. listening. Yeah. Uh, so the the thing is, is that one, one now thing, see here, now see here, whippersnapper. Uh, oh, there was an, I was listening today. There was another funny one. I can't remember it though. Um, Oh, steak with all the fixings. That was it. Um, the uh, sounds like my uncle talking. <laughs> but no, the the thing is, is that most of talking. most of what we worry about, and that's what he says, in that it just it it never happened yeah. or never will happen, and and we worry about a lot of things that we don't need to, and we worry about the wrong stuff. Like he said, if you were going to go into a, a war where you die, where uh, as many people died as in the in the Civil War. Then you'd be pretty scared and like get your sure. affairs in order. And at the time, the number of people that died in the Civil War are the same amount at that time that died between the ages of like 50 and 55. But you're not scared of that, you know, because it's like right. 50. But it's the same number. So it's just what you said. We're bad with numbers. We, we, we uh, seem to get excited about ideas. It's scarier to die in a plane crash than in a car crash. So we don't want to die in a plane crash. Well, right. it's because we're. we're we're always so afraid nowadays of of crime. We think that the, the world's going to hell in a handbasket, <laughs> and, and yet the statistics show yeah, yeah. conclusively that crime. we are safer than we've ever been. Crime is is down so much now. Mm -hmm. Violent crime. Violent crime. I remember, I remember also like when I was younger that a lot of times like we'd be going through some neighborhood and like my parents would kind of scare me a little because they'd be like, "Oh, this is a bad neighborhood." Roll up. What happens, you know, like in bad oh. neighborhoods? But the, then I, you know, in my adult life, I moved to Baldwin Park, which isn't a great neighborhood because I witnessed like a crime of one sort or another on pretty much an annual basis. You got a bullet in Yet, the wall. Yeah, yeah. Even some there was a shoot a shooting. No one got shot, but there's a shootout down the street, and a few bullets hit my uh, condo because I was in the front facing the. Um, in my condom, it <laughs> burst, condom. and the wedding was over. <laughs> Wait, oh no, the tent blew. It but flooded the wedding. Okay, so the the thing is, despite that happening, 
uh, maybe I was just not taking it in the right proportions, like how I should be afraid, but I would still, there was a 24-hour Mexican restaurant down the street. It didn't care if it, I didn't care if it was like 3 in the morning or 4 in the morning or whatever. I would just walk down there and pick up some food and walk it back because I didn't care. It's the like neighborhood. This, this neighborhood isn't what we would call a, quote, good neighborhood, yet I didn't walk around like hiding under a rock. Going like I worked in yeah. Watts for 12 years and mainly I wasn't worried because I was white. Honestly, yeah. I mean, the problems that happen a lot of the time, especially in LA, it's gang member problems. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, if you're a certain race, there's a possibility you, you're going to have a problem because people will be like, hey, wh where are you from? Which right. means what, you know, what gang you from? And you, there's no right answer to that. And you're going to get your ass kicked or worse. But when it comes down to like us goody goods, you know, like, oh, let's not go to the bad neighborhood. We're, yeah. you know, it's not like muggings. I don't, I don't know about New York. There's a lot of muggings, I guess, is what we hear. But is there yeah. really? I mean, we never get mugged. Is there muggies in L.A.? I never even heard of that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, it's yeah, just like, are, you know, it's called armed robbery here. The, <laughs> yeah. But it's perspective on how often it happens. That Which is not yeah, very often. Right. And right. you see it in the news, and they're like, they think everyone's doing it. Right. Because, because they need that. Because highlighted. Because yeah. they, and they need that to, to put it on the news. And th there's another thing. When you watch the news and you hear, about, like, oh, that person murdered someone or killed their kids, you always put it in perspective of your life. Right. And you think... How could that happen? And it's so amazing, but it's not someone like you. It's somebody who probably had a horrible family life, who probably is nothing like you at all, and was probably had yeah, mental disorders. I, yeah. I think I'm going to extend on this one. Okay. Um, well, I just want to say with with uh, crime, and Kale's mentioning armed robbery and stuff, is you hear so much about gun control and about uh, how uh, people are yeah. killing with <laughs> gun control of a loser. Joseph Zaghi! But you don't hear the stats of how many crimes were stopped because mm -hmm. the victim had a gun? You don't get those right. stats. You get I, how many uh, were killed by somebody with a gun. Honestly, you don't get the protection. Honestly, value. I don't like guns. I would never own one. But I did work in Watts, like I said, and there were gangs related killings there, and people did get murdered, and people who were not in gangs that lived there did get one of my kids' fathers got shot in the head because he witnessed mm -hmm. something. I think that if everybody there had a gun, the gang members would think before yeah right. I, honestly i do anyway well, there's there's another aspect of that too because i i think uh bowling for columbine highlighted um a lot of michael moore's idea there and again the irony of you know he used a lot of fud to portray different ideas but he he highlights how the media in the united states in particular has kind of a violent streak to it and it kind of encourages more people to have guns and and get guns which generally leads to more gun violence. And you don't have that in every culture. Like he highlights how in Canada, um, there's not nearly as many guns and not nearly as much violent crime. It's too, involving it's too cold. Could be. <laughs> but it, but not, it's like, but if you look boring. at their media, there's a cultural difference. They don't have the latest shooting like every night at 11 showing up on their TV screens. So it's kind of like a different cultural bent where maybe they don't have the FUD going on and therefore there's not as much. Like even a gun kept for defense can still be used for offensive purposes. Oh, sure. and, What's on the news then? Hey, I can be offensive even without <laughs> Hockey. a gun. Uh, then again, this is Michael Moore. I don't expect all of it to be accurate without doing my own fact checking. But I'm just saying that that's I he agree. does present an Your interesting fact checking um, <laughs> idea there. So, and he also like highlights he makes Canada look like some utopia, which it probably yeah, isn't. Nobody, so, locks <laughs> nobody locks their doors. Yeah, exactly. It's not bad, eh? Nope. Uh, okay, the numbing effect. Do we get numbed out from all this FUD and it's working against those who are trying to control us? I am trying to control you! I show you scary stuff! And then we go, oh, we're not scared anymore because we're so used to it. Or do do legitimate concerns like, um, we brought up climate change before, like there might be, might have been at some point so much FUD over it that it kind of numbed us to it. Or we've experienced other things where there was FUD over a certain thing and you go like, well, that didn't happen like there wasn't another ice age for example um, well the, the problem with me with climate change was just was almost the opposite of that or was something like that was there was so much fud i right. knew it was fud which made right. me not like it and i didn't look at the real science right right uh, yeah so mm. it can kind of dissuade you from giving because if you see if you identify something as kind of a um dishonest tactic being used to present something if you're thinking about it hard enough, that's going to dissuade you from believing it, which might actually turn you to the opposite opinion. Which may have nothing to do with it. You're looking at the argument uh, that was used uh, to 
to uh, convince you, not at the actual right idea itself. So. Do you think it'd be like um, <clears throat> kind of like post nine the post nine eleven kind of syndrome? Like at first, everyone everyone's afraid to fly. Yeah. Um, everyone is afraid to go to the airport, and they're going to be like a bomb or this and that. And now it's kind of like just normalized out to we where it's didn't really know it at no the time, but you know, terrorism is a very low probability event. Mm -hmm. So like you're far less likely to die or even be hurt from terrorism as opposed to uh, again you know an easy one having it's a, a car accident it's on the order of like being hit by lightning it's pretty improbable well after uh after 9 11 uh, linda and i were talking and i was i was saying to her when we're watching the news and everybody's scared to fly i said no it is going to be it's going to be so safe to fly now because mm -hmm. nobody is going to be able to t to take over an aircraft no way! Yeah. Because everybody's yeah. going to think they're going to kill us, so they're going to attack the them. Ethiopian and it, and the, a couple exactly. of times yeah, that there, somebody tried there to, there was something recently though, that kind of goes against that. There was this Ethiopian pilot who, um, a co-pilot who co-opted a plane and took it out of the. I, I, where did he land? He was trying Geneva. Geneva. He was okay. trying to get to. Right. Um, right, but that's a different right? situation. Was he was in the cockpit. Right. That's a whole different situation. But were they having a but wedding? He, but he used sure. fear to control the plane. <laughs> That's where the band is. He was telling people that he's that's cutting off the oxygen way. if he, what he does anything. Right. right. He's right. going to crash it. The band in the, the orchestra. The band in the orchestra is in the cockpit. No! <laughs> <laughs> it was so good it had to be told. Oh, my told. God. <laughs> no, I, I, I wasn't telling you guys at home. I was retelling Paul and Caleb because right. I missed it. That was, oh that was good, Daryl. But anyway, the thing That's is, great. a lot of people assumed that, you know, once this uh, happened, that, you know, they would maybe storm the cockpit or something, but people didn't. And the thing is, every situation is different. So I think if, if someone's clever enough, they might find a way to yeah. come into a, an airplane. They just no, there's always the that there's again, exceptions you know? to every rule. But what right. I'm saying is, is that that particular incident, he's in the cockpit. Mm -hmm. That's where the good barrier is, so they couldn't get to him well, if they wanted to. Well, I think it's to. a cultural difference too. I think if it was an American flight, that's a big deal too. They'd be trying to knock down. The part of what made it yeah. complicated also is that the pilot was trying to talk the guy down, talk him yeah. out of flying out of the country. Yeah. So that's the thing is, too. I don't think they believed he was going to like ram them into a target or something right. and kill right. everyone. He wanted. He just wanted to. Uh, and asylum. You, you know, right. the thing is, is that whatever yeah. happens next, the next big terrorist attack, whatever, it's not going to be a plane. It's going to be something we that's totally like don't expect. <laughs> right. Like we didn't expect Where's it with the plane. Cart. Right. What the, the frickin' peanuts? I'm hungry. <laughs> what? He's Ethiopian. He needs food. <laughs> That's what he wanted. Let's <laughs> oh, uh, see. Where can we bleep? Um, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> All right. Racist I know. bastard. I'm, there goes my political career. There you go. <laughs> is this a long extends? Are we still extending? No, no, this. Uh, no, the, we're past ended. that. We're on the next section. Oh, okay. Well, we didn't introduce it. Fuck fun with fun. <laughs> Wait, that was. It doesn't matter because we actually no, moved on, to, hey, uh, I'm effects. scared and yeah, I'm uncertain and I have doubt about this whole oh, podcast. We're, we're still, still on, on the numbing effect. Yeah, you yeah, touched yeah. my screen, bastard. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, dude, you've got a touch screen. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. That's, I need to do that. Well, we're already People over an hour and we've got we've got three three more things to yeah, go. This, this, well, maybe four minutes. No, no, no. no. We, we had like ten minutes at the beginning that was on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's all right. All right. Okay. This does start. Right. So, uh, Disregard that. Oh, so we're numbness and it's probably going to ring any moment now then. Well, I guess. Yeah, okay. I, well, I was numb to the bell. Make sure it's, yeah, it's... So the bell same. makes you go, it's the bell that makes you go, well, Sue gets it. <laughs> da -ding, da -ding, da -ding. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get a hop oh, and the bell. Nice. A little okay, that's fine. Let, let me go back to what I said before. Fun with fun. Uh, even a level-headed discussion about the culture of the... What the hell? Well, fight, fight, fight with FUD, that would be like um, political campaign yeah, commercials and yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's very true. And we didn't go into that. And there's, Michael Moore. There's, and Michael a, lot Moore, of, yeah. there's a lot of FUD yeah, of course, in we didn't talk campaign. anything about those guys yet. No, not really. Um, <laughs> but also, even us. You know, like, I'm bringing up this topic, and, like, I've been kind of, um, yeah. kind of cautioning myself about, like, don't make it sound too conspiratorial or too much like you need to be afraid of the media and big corporations. Because that's, that's how I took I'm it. using the same damn tactic. Right. Now, what I'm trying Scared to do is hopefully, hopefully we're illustrating it enough where we're saying, look, this is something to think about. Don't necessarily be afraid, but take a look, see if, check our facts. Don't just mm -hmm. believe us because we're saying it, it, it. It's the same things that I tell students when I help them research uh, papers and stuff. Know your source. Yeah. And critique your source as as well don't you can't just take your word from any website right. or any paper or you whatever know, yeah. you need to see where the source is coming from I, I think you are so right on that Paul and I think that's what it comes down to is critical thinking that, that you 
anything, anything you read from any source, you have to look at it, you have to, you know, com uh, check it against other sources, and what you just said, critique the source it came from. Yeah. And really take everything with a grain of salt. You know, before you just go ahead and believe it, especially these days with the internet, the way things get spread around the internet and people just believe anything. And I think that's what's got to happen these days. It's kind of like the antithesis of what I said before about identifying FUD. Like, if you hear dishonest um, arguments and a lot of uh, logical fallacies being done, that's a sign that you're probably dealing with someone who's more interested in portraying one side of something and giving it a scary bent. But then if you hear the opposite, you know, someone encouraging you to find the facts for yourself, someone encouraging you to dig deeper, someone encouraging you to think critically about it, then that's a good sign that they're pushing you in a direction that's not just based on FUD. I mean, and, I've been encouraged to dig deeper. Well, yeah. honestly, well, haven't we all? Honestly, Daryl, when we when you first said we were doing in uh, incoherent fallacies, <laughs> uh, incoherent in truth. Well, yeah, <laughs> when we were doing logical fallacies, I thought that was going to be the most boring episode because I didn't know what it was about. And it was. And well, wait, no, no hold on. No, wait, wait. When we did it, I thought it was, it was okay. Right. Listening to it though, <laughs> it really made me, you know, going over it again. I. I think about it all the time now. Whenever I hear something or read something, I think about those logical fallacies, and I know with doing this one, I'm going to think about FUD. I've never even thought about it before, and if it's something that's actually happening, it's in that same boat. So I think it's a, you've been doing a very important public service announcement. And you have to question that, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to rally people without striking some emotion in them. Right, right? and so well, it has see, to happen. That's the first thing I look for. Anytime I'm listening to anybody's speech, I look if they're trying to appeal to my emotions first. Right. If right. they're trying to, then I look at that and say, are yeah. they being legitimate or right. am I just feeling... Like when Hulk like, Hogan would like... <laughs> Talk about his next match back in like the night that was oh, two yet. So you're you're right that emotional arguments don't necessarily mean it's like a, an ad hominem attack in a way. Like mm -hmm. you can hold that against them as being a poor arguer. Doesn't mean their arguments are necessarily wrong. Right. That's why you just have but to look it means at you it. Should be careful. About you shouldn't discount them right off the bat just because they're trying to appeal to your emotions. And you're gonna but, have but, people who are always going to fall for these things on the internet, on Facebook, on the news, and they're right. gonna want it, and they want to want to see it and take it as truth as at face value. Well, there's also a lot of confirmation bias out there. Like if you hear an argument that's along the lines of what you already believe. Right. Right. That is confirming that you're right, and everyone wants to be right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes people surround themselves in that kind of stuff. Like, if you're already politically conservative, you're very likely to watch Fox News over, say, MSNBC or CNN, because it's more um, of that reinforcement. Yeah. It's like, it's saying, I already values. believe this, Preaching and now I have a choir. bunch of people telling yeah. me. That is the same thing. So, do you think that if you have if you have a word to get out, should you be using FUD to fight against FUD, or do you take a different route? Um, I take go lightly on the FUD. Yeah, <laughs> try to FUD her. Especially gently. if it's your first time. <laughs> it's, Are you a first time fudder? If you're, it's your first time fudder, you need to go light. You need to yeah. Yeah. just think of. You must FUD her gently. Hey, on the on the first time, also think of Cherry Seven Up. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> the gentle pink in the mixture. <laughs> <laughs> the harsh red. <laughs> oh, you never get the dirty this brown. Thing. Just whoa! Whoa. <laughs> whoa! Whoa! She's she's either been into something weird or just when you think we're going to be critical <laughs> thinkers. <laughs> <laughs> we turn, uh, you know, first and foremost, uh, we, we kind of already talked about this, but let's go on to it more. Uh, what can we do about it? Be brave. <laughs> Stop worrying. Keep on living. <laughs> Keep on read, trucking. Read your, with our wallets and attention. Read Fun. your Dale it's, Carnegie. Fun is often like bat dick bait rating. <laughs> <laughs> Like Sorry, well, proportionally huge to the body. Babes, hey, ratings. I read that wrong. Bad dick wedding. Been tripod. Oh, now the now the the, the bat dick has. Hey, look, that bat has a kickstand. Yeah. Hey, that, has that bat dick? Hey, that bit, kickstand has a bat. Has, has, has that bat dick been booked for a wedding for this uh, this spring? Jeez, we're gonna have a wow. few guests. Uh, what do you do about uh, it? It definitely was spring by we, looking at it. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> what do we do about it? Uh, what, how do we uh, we can't what talk about that? We have about? to. What do you do about fun? <laughs> what was our well, subject? I, I think I like, personally <laughs> for like for me is when I hear stuff like people talking about uh, like the subway incident and mm -hmm. all that is I I try to 
throw in a little facts to um, debunk it. Right. To kind of explain, like, well, you know, this this misinformation, this and that, whatever. So yeah. it's it's may not be able to change people's views or their ideas. I mean, yeah. it's it's like talking religion sometimes and politics and all that. But it's just giving another point of view and trying to be subtle about it so yeah. you don't piss them off. Well, you, you have something there that you can switch the game where someone's making a really emotional argument for something. You can switch it up and make the more rational argument. And that often doesn't persuade people a whole lot, but it often plants a seed where maybe later on they'll be thinking about the subject and they go, you know, Paul brought up something about this thing being all BS. And he I don't necessarily this seed within me. I don't yeah. necessarily believe him on that, but, yeah. you know, uh, maybe th- even if it just inspires them to try to disprove you, it might lead them to some other facts and they go, oh, wait, maybe there is something to what Paul said. You know, yeah. So it's kind of like just putting the little kernel in there to say you it's know, like it's like you put the little kernel in there <laughs> put the little yeah. kernel in right. and and deposit the seed. It's right. like people who just read the Yahoo News headline oh, and not man, the story. Those are his secret herbs and spices right there. <laughs> <laughs> All my, eleven of them. My poppycock. <laughs> you know, there was a. I wish I could remember the arguments that he used, uh, but one of my philosophy professors at uh, PCC, Pasadena City College, th- Doctor Richards, <laughs> probably, <laughs> <laughs> he uh, made this where he gave us a subject, and then he told us why it was correct. Yeah, that was him. Oh, okay, you had him. With okay, that too? if you're going the, the direction I think you're going on this, yeah, he tells you why it's correct, and then he does the other. That's the cool thing is, is yeah. that he convinces. Convinces us totally. Right. All oh of yeah, us. He, but we're, he is we're right. just like that's the answer. It is. He knows. Oh yeah, my god. Right. And, and then, then, <laughs> then, then he switches and he argues <laughs> even more. So on the other side, and you're on like, the other side. So you're totally convinced that you're way. Like, that's the answer. That. Wait a minute. And then, <laughs> then he shows you what yeah. what he just did on both sides. He was awesome. Right? Man. And that right there was one of the best that's things it. I think I have ever had that helped me think. About not knowing about FUD back yeah. then, but thinking that way, looking at things and identifying the problems with the argument. One of the things my debate instructor did, and this is pretty common practice in debate classes, is they have you choose a side on a, on a topic. You were say, argue the sec. Yeah. Did you ever have a mass debate? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Were you the master debater? <sighs> I, that was too I was old. Pretty, that was I was on. pretty high in my class. I'll tell you what. Yeah. They probably did call me yeah. the master. Yeah, you were. Okay, so what your uh, so master they would make you say? they would make you choose a side because obviously you're going to choose right, the side right. you're comfortable with. And they say, okay, now you're arguing, arguing the, the other opposite. side. That's cool. Right against someone else who's arguing the opposite, but it forces you to uh, at least make an attempt to find the facts on the issue for the opposite of your <laughs> existing yeah. opinion and to. You know, change your perspective so that you can see the other side at least. Yeah, you know, yeah. Who, you know who the I just realized who the biggest culprit is in FUD infomercials. <laughs> True, <laughs> because I oh, was dude. never able to make a pancake because <laughs> I, 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 I was scared. But now that I got the perfect pancake. <laughs> Have you ever been? Make me easy. Have I you ever sizzled your yeah. hand on on <laughs> bubbling butter? And we know, we know the bacon bowl isn't going to work that well. We know, yeah. But we're still going to get it. But what like, about the gyro bowl? <laughs> Have you ever spilled your Cheerios? Be afraid. Yeah, I use yeah. that. And I spilled everything <laughs> in it. <laughs> Give it to a, a, a one year old. It doesn't Are work. You crying over spilt milk again? <laughs> You're a loser. Now yeah. the fire product. How about that poached egg <laughs> thing too? That was like, pretty cool. All right, uh, conclusion. Yeah, King toes. Been there, man. Yeah, that just sucked. Dude. You, the kink, the little dude. My hose are always yeah. so kinky. I well, swear. he says you have weddings on. Uh, no, but yeah, it just, it the just shake weight. Shake weight. The yeah. shake weight. Oh man, uh, that dude. Wow. All you need to do is censor out the shake weight, and then you got yourself a porno. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know. You got just blur. Officer. You just blur <laughs> the shake weight, yeah. and you've got a porno. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> All right, let's conclude this puppy. Let's do it. <laughs> Conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are we concluding? Okay, it said, this is what Daryl wrote about conclusion. All right, let's hear it. Is it just human nature to be fearful? Nobody knows the future, so it isn't it part of the human experience to fud over it? <laughs> <laughs> Our evolutionary ancestry had short, brutish lives. Yes, they did. Oh, perhaps. <laughs> Especially my friend. Why was that a minute? You can reach us at know. show. 
Oh, because I am was, rambling. We got confused com. about the conclusion. Okay, My okay, name okay, is Paul okay. we'll this why right here is killed. Oh, Perhaps we should be grateful that uh, today's FUD has become somewhat less immediate and less personal. We enjoy FUD vicariously as the luxury of the modern developed world. Or do we? <laughs> By the way, Joe, did you make up FUD or is it actually a thing? Oh, it's a thing. It's a real yeah, thing. It's actually. Thing. Yeah. Cause if you made it up, look, I want to change it because it's just just look at <laughs> comments in like all you have to do on is anything look, on the internet. You look at it. I, I'm not googling fun. It's too w- close no. to. Wikipedia has a fear, mm. uncertainty, and doubt page. Nice. So it is real. It is real. It's just real. like yeah. Nicolas Cage is a dick. Immortal. Yeah, that's real. No, no, no. What was no, it? Immortal. Keanu Reeves is immortal. Huh? <laughs> you guys didn't see my post on uh, the painting of the actors uh-huh. who are immortal. Uh, I'll um, put it in the show notes. All right, no, Nicolas no. Cage, the uh, yeah. Civil War guy. Civil War. So. Um, okay, so let's wrap it up. So uh, it is, and I think it's just what we said. It's part of human nature right. because we want the fud because it, it's mm-hmm. interesting. It's story, and some of us need we it. Want, want it more fud. than that. we want the fud. Bring out. But fud. also, the thing is, um, like you were saying about you know how we were attacked on nine eleven. It just kind of came out of nowhere, and that's part of the thing about human nature is we're kind of engineered to try to anticipate bad things that might happen. So we didn't anticipate that, so it's an imperfect system. However, we do tend to look at, at things Cap- around us, Captain and we Man. often come up with the most unlikely things to be afraid of. Yeah. But we, uh, we're we also being steered I'm to afraid be afraid of, of worms. Things, well, it's Cap- Captain Hindsight. That's what you should have done. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> that but Captain. A couple wings fall off a plane. Nobody wants to fly that airline anymore. Dude, all you have to do is have some Captain Morgan, then... Captain Hindsight goes away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think, but I think FUD is part of, uh, part of, I think the reason why it's become a thing now is just because there's, the internet's available for everyone to put out whatever they want. Sure. And we haven't gotten to the point where we are discriminative enough with the internet where we can just say that. I like that word. Oh, thank you. I, I might have just made it up. I'm not sure. It. Yeah. Uh, where we can just say, hey, that, that's not real. We need to look into that. Because, I've said this before, I have a Facebook account just for games, and so I've got all these people I just that I know nothing about from all over the U.S. or all over the world that just play the same game as me, but have nothing in common. And some of the things they post, it's just like, are you a freaking idiot? You know, because they're <laughs> yes. just people who just post whatever. Right. And where a lot of the people that I, I interact with who are my actual friends on my actual Facebook account don't do that. Right. So it's, it's interesting to see that there are people out there who just, they almost thrive off of FUD. And, and then that's right. how they see the world. Well, it's it's thinking uh, thinking in a fud way. That's not so I'm thinking in a fud anyway, way. Is that the fun you, zone? <laughs> the fun zone. <laughs> we get some fun prospecting today. Yay! When you're thinking, well, we prospected. Way, it's, it's a, your life seems much more interesting. Oh yeah. yeah. That's a good point. And, and that's, Fun makes life interesting. It does. Yeah, it, that's and very people get very interest. You know, it's like, oh, I'm a part of something really interesting. Yeah. Especially people who live, like, in the middle of nowhere or in, you know, in the in farm. Well, also, belt. everyone needs a villain. So, like, if something bad happens to you, you have to have something <clears throat> to blame it on. So why not the big government or the big conspiracy or all the banks? You know, blame it on all them. That's my next business. But I'll it, be your... It, I'll be your fud. I'll be your fud. <laughs> also, you know, <laughs> it's like, I'll it's be just fun. Like a weird I'll be your fud. Let me be your <laughs> fud. <laughs> Let me be your fud. All right, we got Paul. Uh, no, I'd say uh, fud is, is like I said, it's, it's entertaining, mm-hmm. it, and it gets it gets people involved in into the story. Like like Joy said before, we we had it at work a um, Homeland Security video on. Uh, Violence in the workplace, and it was a guy coming in with a gun, killing people. That's the big fun thing. And it scared the crap out yeah, of me. Yeah, that is. That's right. a good point. That is a huge thing now because and, of. And again, a little. It was like it was like it was like a yeah. movie. A guy comes in and it wasn't a black guy, but it was a white guy in black. But it, and he has, <laughs> as opposed to all the black guys in white, <laughs> yeah, that, exactly <laughs> that aren't very. So he comes in an assault rifle, starts blowing everybody away, and everybody's like they're on Damn. the computers and like, oh my god, and there's like intense music going on. For Sutherland, and then it's the like this deep going. voice, deep movie voice, is like, what I've would you do? <laughs> would you fight <laughs> or would you flee? And it's it's whole story, yeah. and it's like that. It it it's that, more entertaining. It makes you fear and like think what they want you. To do for them, but, but it's also the whole Captain in. Hindsight thing where they're trying to cover their ass, like yeah. they're afraid if this happens, it's such a big thing now. Yeah. But it's not; it's a big thing in our heads. It's I'm not also really. not saying that you shouldn't worry about it, but again, it's a matter of perspective. Like 
school shootings are terrible, as horrible as they are. Horrible, but but when you hear about them happening every now and then, but then you realize that just LA County has what ten thousand campuses, just in LA yeah. County. Are you getting sent? Anybody? Uh, no, I think no. that probably did it. Because oh, you make you make you, you, time you make you make yeah. Yeah. We have a the point. It's just everyone. One minute. You see it on the it's news gone. once, like the school shootings, and everybody sees it on the news. Are you like, extend? Like, okay, happens extend. everywhere. Okay, we're someone extending. should extend. All right, extend. Okay. All right. So yeah, it, it's like, oh my god. Does anybody have an extend? Every school, yeah. but me. Paul, I have an extend. <laughs> okay, but no, it happens everywhere. That's, that's oh my exactly god! It. What, what you just said, it's, LAUSD no, has more. has so many schools. You know, yeah. it just right. seems like it more because it's the so big many thing. like you know so many teachers are are pedophiles and stuff. It's yeah. So you think about like the hundreds of thousands of campuses countrywide. And the millions of students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then once you start playing those number games, you realize exactly how rare those kind of occurrences are. Well, like the, um, well, see, the it's, Sandy it's, Hook, which was just very depressing. But if you look at the, the the facts of the problem with the kid and at home and access he had and, and the way he grew up, it it just makes sense how, yeah. how totally messed up it was he would do that. Yeah. And another aspect of FUD is like... Again, seeking a villain. It's like, oh, let's blame violent video games and let's blame Marilyn Manson music yeah. and things like that. For... What did we watch growing up? G.I. Joe. Right. Are Think we blowing of... up terrorists what everywhere? Did we... What did how we... many kids <laughs> are... <laughs> we... Like, how many kids are into this, like, music and, and games and stuff like that and turn out just fine? We played war yeah. at Longden School with guns that looked like AK-47s yeah. that were squirt guns. Right. And we're fine. We haven't killed yeah. anybody well, yet. Well, when I was a kid, they had this big <laughs> argument yes. about the cartoons because Right, all uh, Bugs Bunny and I the Road Violet, Runner yeah. and Wiley Coyote. Man, they were smashing they the crap out of each other. Throughout all that history, violence. anytime there's new media, including like like plays and, and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. it's like plays are corrupting everyone. Look, there's all this sex and violence and people dying everywhere. And it's, think yep. of the children is always the argument. Yep, well, yeah, and the thing argument. is, the Bugs Bunny ones weren't violent. You want to see a real, real violent Bugs Bunny? It's that it's either South Park or. I think it was Family Guy that had like Elmer Fudd really kill Bugs Bunny, oh, yeah. <laughs> and he like shoots him and Bugs Bunny. He's like, "What's up, talking about?" Ah! And then he like breaks his neck and drowns. Oh, him. Oh, the Simpsons. <laughs> um, what are the two characters? Oh, it's and Scratchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, okay right. guys, that Ooh, was fun, and boy, was it fun! It was yeah. Fudd and something. <laughs> All right, so that brings us to next week's topic, which is going to be Kale's number 42. What are we going to be doing, Kale? We are going to be talking about cyborgs. Ooh. Nice! Oh, I love that We're movie. We're going to talk about... <laughs> <laughs> you got to watch it. you got to watch Cyborg. Here we go. <laughs> We're talk about the past science fiction of it, the reality it's today, old. Like, and, and what's going to happen in the yo, future. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> Gangsta cyborg style. Gangsta cyborg yeah. style. GCS. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can catch us at I Am Rambling. Oh, no, I said it backwards. Show at I Am Rambling.com. I'm Joey Shamel. And I'm Paul Huttinger. I'm Kale Anderson. I'm Daryl George. And remember, George. we never <laughs> say where we can be found. It's I Am fun. Rambling, and then go to your All freaking right, bio page. Good. Remember, we <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> we're incoherent. I remember that. I'm trying to say our new line, dude. Oh, our yeah. new our new slogan is. Remember, we're incoherent, so you don't have to B. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No B. That's the point. It's okay. incoherent. Okay, you can do no. it again. The thing is, let me say, let him say, we're we're incoherent, and then we'll all say, so, so you, you don't, don't have, have to. to. And then, and then put them the back. Okay. No, no, ring, no. ring. Oh. Wait, wait. Ring, ring. Three guys plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. We're incoherent, so, so you don't, don't have to. to. No, f I said. <laughs> <laughs> wait. Take two. <laughs> wait. <laughs> that was a good one. I like that one. That was a f***ing ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Remember, we're incoherent, so, so you don't, don't have to. to. Boy. <laughs> Thanks for listening. You can now stop screaming at the open air. Listeners should put their minds back in their upright positions and resume traditional thinking. Find us on imrambling.com for access to all of our weekly ramblings, show notes, general discussions, and any projects from Incoherent Ramblings. Like us on Facebook and rate us on iTunes. So long, and thanks for all the fish. And 
today we're talking about FUD, which stands for Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas or something. What is it, Daryl? Fear, uncertainty, doubt. Yes, we'll talk Everything more about that. that. Every man gets when he's going to get today's sponsor. Oh, we don't have a sponsor. <laughs> Cold feet or fucked up. Do we have a sponsor? Hey, <laughs> already? We don't have a sponsor. We don't, <laughs> we don't really. We didn't talk about that, did we? Okay, we're too so afraid to have here. a sponsor. Okay, let's I was thinking <laughs> like a figure of Michael Moore would work, but maybe. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Okay, Michael Moore Daryl, from Daryl. Uh, uh, Team America. Editing Daryl yeah, Fitch. Right. Just what's, beat. A, what's that? The cowardly dog? Hey! We oh, got one Cur second. Curry's the cowardly dog. <laughs> Damn, Damn it. it, that was supposed to be pre ramble. <laughs> pre ramble? This is another minute. Another minute, minute. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Our sponsor today is. Daryl, fill in here. So blah, 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 blah. Right. Okay. Elvis Presley. <laughs> no, maybe not. Uh, Nicholas Cage. And. Uh, Wicker Man. Yes. And so uh, this was Daryl's topic, so we'll talk more about that in the. You want to start over with a sponsor? Yeah, maybe we should. Yeah. Let's let's just start over. All right, start over. It is so I can scare the crap out of everybody. All right, I'm trying to think of like Daredevil's the fear one, but isn't there like a not a superhero, but like some sort of villain that uses fear or something? Oh, Scarecrow. Wait, Freddy. Scarecrow. Freddy, dude. Oh, yeah. Freddy would be pretty Fe good. Too. Yeah, Freddy. I like that one. Yeah, I like Freddy's that one. pretty good. Because okay. that'd be fear. So you get like you know a picture of a Freddy figure. Yeah. Freddy got figured. figured. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that'll work. Fear leads to hate. Hate yeah. to anger. And it leads to bad movies, too. <laughs> okay, what are you talking so about? That was two minutes. Empire was the best one. <laughs> that was Phantom Menace. Yeah. That he said that line. What? Right. Where he said fear leads to fear hate. Fear leads thing. to hate. Yeah. Hate leads to hate. I thought he said that uh, to uh, Luke. Suffering. In, uh, in, on Dagobah. Uh, Didn't he, he say that? He says that whole line. No. Fear leads to the dark side. That's said right. Oh, is that what he said? Yeah. No, oh, okay. that was Darth. I'm mistaken. Damn, dark side f***s up your life. <laughs> and I know he didn't Ask say that. Dad. <laughs> dark side f***s your You're life. You're using his lightsaber. <laughs> Turns her over to play in the mud. 